Hello, let's review some math concepts that are going to help you in this course. And if you need more work on them, then we will have um, some times where we can talk and discuss them in further detail. But let's start off with adding and subtracting signed numbers. So when you have signed numbers, you need to think about their signs and what that means in terms of their value. So if you've got a negative number, it's coming off of whatever your, your current value is. Um, think of it as a checkbook where the positive numbers are the, the positive balance, like you have money in your account, and negative numbers are checks that you've written against your balance. So sometimes you end up with a negative amount in your checking account, it's not a good thing, but it does happen. Sometimes you have a positive value and you take away a check and you still have a positive value. That's what we like. Um, so we could have something like a balance of seven in our account. Then we add three dollars. Then we still have a positive amount. So we're up to ten dollars. You can also think of it on a number line. We have zero. There's three, there's seven, and really what we're saying is that we're starting at seven, that's this number, starting at seven and adding three to it. Starting at seven, we're going a positive three, which puts us at 10. Um, if we have a similar sort of thing where one of the numbers is negative, we're still starting at seven, but this time we're going a negative three, which means go to the left. So we go one, two, three to the left. That puts us at a positive four. It's right there at positive four. Okay, so seven plus a negative three is four. You can also think of plus a negative like that as the same thing as seven minus three, which we all know seven minus three is four. So it's exactly the same thing if you have seven plus a negative three or seven minus three, exact same thing. All right, um, if you've got a subtraction sign in between, then we do it the opposite way. So we change it from a negative to plus a negative. It means you're starting at that seven again and going one, two, three jumps to the left, which puts you at a positive four. Okay, then if you have seven minus a negative three, it's, it's like the opposite of a negative, which is a positive, or a double negative in English, which if you say, I'm not never going, it means you're going, even though we never understand that properly, but a double negative in English also implies the positive. So we look at this as seven minus a negative three and we say change them both, it becomes plus a positive. And so then it's just seven plus three or 10. All right, let's take a look if we're multiplying and dividing. We have two easy rules. Um, for multiplying and dividing with sign numbers. The first one is if the signs are the same, then either you've got both negative numbers that you're multiplying or both positive numbers that you're multiplying, then the product or when you multiply them, your answer is going to be positive. So I always say um, same signs, your result is positive. And here you have positive seven times a positive three, that gives you a positive 21. Negative seven times negative three also gives you a positive 21. Now, if the signs are different, where one of them's positive and one of them's negative or negative and positive, like in this first case, you do end up with a negative on your answer. So negative seven times positive three, negative 21. Seven times negative three, negative 21 as well. So signs are different, the result is going to be negative. Okay, now quick review on fractions. If you're adding fractions, you have to have the same denominator for adding and subtracting, but for multiplying and dividing, it does not matter what your denominators are. So adding and subtracting, we have to have the same denominator. So let's see that here, adding or subtracting, you have to have the same denominator. So you build them up. So you multiply by something over itself, 
to get, we look at two and three and we see that two and three, we're going to use a common denominator of six. You can get that by multiplying two times three. And then we know that two times three, like we just said, will give us the six for the denominator. We're going to have to do that for the numerator as well. So we have one half, let's do it one more time, times three over three. When we multiply those, we get three over six and that's where this first number came from right here. And then the same thing, if we have one third, our second fraction, we'll, we'll have to multiply that by two over two because in the denominators, look at them, three times two is gonna give you that six that we want and that's the same denominator for both fractions, then we can go ahead and add them. So three times two is six, one times two there will give you two in the numerator. Now you might notice that you can reduce both of these fractions and come up with something in a reduced form and it should be those fractions that you started with. They should be exactly equivalent so that if you reduce them, you get what you started with. So that's a good double check, but don't reduce because we want to leave them with sixths so that we can combine them here in a moment. So we have three sixths plus two sixths. So three plus two in the numerator and we get five and we're talking about six divisions of a pie or a cake and we have five pieces there. So it's still going to be five over six. We're not changing that denominator. So five over six. If we're subtracting, we still have to build them up so they have a common denominator and it's the exact same process we used before. Um, and we're gonna end up with three six this time minus two six. So we do three minus two for the numerator and it's going to be over six. So three minus two is one and one over six. So there we have one sixth for our result. Okay, that's adding and subtracting. When we multiply and divide these two, we, we don't need a common denominator. So we have one half times one third and to do that we just multiply, I usually show a little arrow there, multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So we're going to have one times one for the numerator, two times three for the denominator, so it's going to be one over six. We are multiplying, so we multiply numerators and multiply denominators. So there's my fraction. If we are dividing, you might remember keep, change, flip or the reciprocal, but we, we keep the initial fraction and then we change this operation to multiplication and we flip the second fraction. It's equivalent to what we started with there. So we end up with one half times three over one. And then we, now, now it's a multiplication problem. So we multiply, so we multiply straight across. One times three, we get three. Two times one, we get two. So our resulting fraction is three over two. Um, we should always reduce our fractions. So say we have 24 over 30. To reduce that, we're looking at the numerator and the denominator and seeing what, what numbers are in both places, top and bottom. I see that I could divide by six, top and bottom, but I also know, well, they're even, so I know at least a two will go into each, so I might just take out that two first, divide the top by two, divide the bottom by two, and I end up with 12 over 15. And then I'm thinking, well, I know there's a three in 12, and there's also a three in 15, so I'm gonna divide both of them again by the same number, and so I end up with four over five. Well, four and five don't have any factors in common, so I'm just going to say at this point that my fraction is reduced. All right, let's see what else we need to work on. Some properties of real numbers. This first one, the commutative property, just says that you can add two numbers in either order and you'll get the same result. So three plus four here on the left is a seven, and on the right, four plus three, still a seven. So it means it doesn't matter what order you add two numbers. Okay, and if you have multiplication, 
Same deal, we have this commutative property for multiplication. It means that 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3. If you're going to represent it with an array or dots or something like that, it might look a little different, but when you count up all your dots at the end, you still have 12, regardless of which way you worked the problem. The associative property is going to tell you that it doesn't matter how you um, combine numbers together if they're all being added. It doesn't matter if you do the second um, and the third sum before you do the first and the second sum. You could do it either way. It should work. Let's try it. So 2 plus, and then 3 plus 4 is going to give you 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. Let's try it using the other two first. So 2 plus 3 first. So I could add 2 plus 3 first and I get 5. And then if I add 4 onto that, still get 9. My second row had different numbers on it, but my total came out the same way. So they're equivalent. I can do either um, the first two as a group or the last two as a group. I could even do the first and the third as a group. All right, same thing for multiply. I can make different groupings and my results should be the same. So I can group the last two to be done first or I could group the first two to be done first. I should get the same result. Let's try. 2 times 3 times 4 is 12, and 2 times 12, 24. On the right hand side, 2 times 3, that gives me 6, times 4, also a 24. So I have a 24 on both sides. Great. Then the distributive property. This one's an interesting one because you have multiply out here in front a quantity being added there inside the parentheses. We have not seen this yet on this page, so it's something new. And what it tells, the distributive property tells us is that we can multiply this 3, multiply it by each thing inside the parentheses, and we're going to get the same result. That's really handy when you have variables and you want to try to isolate them. You can get closer to having them alone by doing the distributive property. So let's test that out and see now that we know what we should be looking for. This is 3 and then 2 plus 3 inside the parentheses. That's a 5. So 3 times 5 gives me 15. Over here on the right, I have 3 times 2. This was distributed, right? So 3 times 2. And that gives me a 6. And then I'm doing 3 times 3. That gives me a 9. When I add 6 and 9, I get 15 as well. So either way, they're equivalent. Now, if I have an equal sign, which has to be there for, for this property, but if I have an equal sign, I can add the same thing to both sides of the equal sign, and it won't change the value at all. So let's take a look. Say I have 5 equals 5. And I decide I want to add 3 to both sides. So I'll add 3 to the left, add 3 to the right. So we get the same thing on both sides. So we could add any number we want to both sides of an equation without changing the value or the, the fact that the two sides are equal. Um, if we have uh, an equation again, we also have a property that says that we can multiply both sides of an equation by something, whatever we want to, without changing the value of the equation. So say again we have 5 equals 5, and say we, we decide we want to multiply by 3 on both sides. Then on the left we have 15, and on the right we have 15, so it's still an equality. The left side is still equal to the right side. And we use this more often when we have variables so that we can get variables by themselves. And with that idea, we also we can also subtract the same quantity from both sides of an equation. Or with the multiplicative um, property, we can also divide
And that's because you can write subtraction as an addition problem, like plus a negative. Remember that from a minute ago. And you can also write division as multiplication. If you want to do, say, 15 divided by 5, you can also write that as 15 times 1 fifth. So divided by 5 is the same as times 1 fifth. So either way, it's the same operation. So that's why we can use it divide both sides of an equation using the multiplication uh, of equality rule. All right. So words that you might encounter that mean add, subtract, multiply, divide, there are many, many. Of is a big one that means multiply, and is is a big one that means equal. Um, there are many others, total, together, and less. Um, ratio, there are several, several of these, and if you have more, you can go ahead, write them in, make sure you know at least the ones that I've put on there, too, because we do run into them frequently. Um, okay, order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or PEMDAS, you might have heard either one of those, P stands for parentheses or other grouping symbols, you take care of them first, Exponents, they're um, to a power, so you might have x squared. That means you would take care of the squared first before you did other things. So with the MD, the multiply, divide, either one, whichever one you come across first, as you go left to right with your expression, that's the one that you have to handle first. So if you have 15 divided by 5, let's say times 3, you have to do the divide first because it comes first as you move left to right. The multiply would be done second, so you would have then 3 times 3 or 9 for this one. Okay, it's a little bit different than what most people remember, but multiply and divide are on the same level, so they're done left to right. Same thing with add and subtract. So if you have 14 minus 7 plus 2, you have to do the subtraction first and then the addition second. So you would have 14 minus 7, so that would be 7, plus 2, and that would be another 9. Okay. So prime factors are things you multiply together. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, those are all factors of 12. Prime factors are the ones that have no other factors. So if you were to look at 12 and do a factor tree, you might choose 2 times 6. And then 6, you know, can be represented as 2 times 3. But below the 2, all you could do is 2 times 1. So we don't even put it because the the one in terms of prime factors doesn't count. So we just want to leave it in, in its lowest form which would be in this form 2 times 2 times 3. All right, that is your work there for the um, review concepts that will help you in this course.